the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Father Brendan Kilcoyne, coming to you again from Athenry, County Galway, for the Brendan Option. Another little visual, little visual consideration, a little Kelka shows, a little something to put in your pocket and take home. I just want, as we start, uh, and, and of course I have an agenda, I, I, I just want to begin by thanking our generous contributors. One contributor in question has, has actually paid for phenomenally good equipment and gone to huge trouble to source and pick the right equipment for us. And uh, we're not allowed to say his name, but the invisible man is thanked. We are, we are so grateful. And if there's anyone else out there who feels moved by the spirit to splash the cash and, and, and give us the old kiss of life and dig us up and breathe life back into us, by all means, please do. Hit the subscribe button. Please develop a close, though platonic, relationship with that subscribe button. Okay? I want you and that subscribe button to get to know each other. That's the first thing you do. And the second thing you do is find us on Patreon. And Patreon will receive your largesse and pass it on to us. Now that I've got that out off my chest... Okay, like most priests, start with the money and once you've got the important thing talked about, we'll move on to poor old God who always gets mentioned second. The last day I talked about the priesthood, so I think probably having earned the odium and hatred of my fellow priests, I'll be buying my own pints for quite some time. But with the lockdown, it doesn't really matter, I suppose. I wonder if we start with confessions. Okay, I, I know... This is a bit of a, it's a spiritual rat sandwich, isn't it? I mean, you know, but let me tell you, that's a sign that you're a good Catholic. It's a sign that you're a good Catholic is when your head caves in at the mention of confessions. That's, a, that's somebody who knows what they're about. Because confessions aren't meant to be a cuddle fest. Confessions aren't uh, simply a feel good session. Actually, the truth is, if you take confessions seriously more, more often than not, you'll feel fantastic coming out of them. But that's by the way. There's a chance to put yourself right with the house. And that's not a small thing. God doesn't need you to grovel. But you need to go back to God. And confessions are the way back. And contrary to what you think, it's not a torture chamber. It's difficult, but sure, if it was easy, would you have any interest? Come on, especially if you're Irish. I, I always said we should try to persuade the government to ban mass completely forever. Then we'd have, a, we'd have a major resurgence in the faith. Are there many people going to confessions? No, there aren't. In one way, I don't blame them. It's tough. Okay. I'm sad for them because they need confessions. You're supposed to go at least once a year, your Easter duty, you're supposed to go at Easter, you're supposed to go um, and confess all mortal sins. Now, a mortal sin, all right, let's not go into the whole thing, but a mortal sin basically is where you have deliberately turned away from God on a matter which is of sufficient weight to be really grave. So, for instance, the theft of a theft is a sin. The theft of, of a penny is a sin. Is it a mortal sin? Not in our culture. No, maybe there's a culture in which a penny is a fortune. The theft of a penny in a country where a penny is a fortune from a poor person would be a mortal sin. But no, it's not in our culture. The theft, the theft let's say, of a, of a couple of thousand euro, could, would, you'd, be, you'd be doing business there. You need to be free. You need to know what you're doing. You need to do it freely. It needs to be sufficiently serious. You see where we're going with this? It needs to be fully what's called a human act. It needs to be the act, as they used to say, of a man or a woman. A human act which involves all of those things I've mentioned. Freedom, knowledge, consent, sufficiently grave matter, the whole thing. What maddens me when I'm sitting in confessions? Well, one is sitting there for ages and nobody coming in because I'm not a good priest. Okay, if I was any good, I'd sit there uncomplainingly, but I'm not and I complain and complain and complain. 
Number two is somebody coming in and telling me what a good person they are. Because it makes me feel insecure because I'm not. And if you're so good, what are you doing in confessions? Why aren't you, I don't know, going around talking to the angels? Don't be ridiculous. And there's somebody saying, I haven't been at confessions for years, but I haven't done anything wrong. What, you, you hit your little head off the pavement or something? What, what is this crap? I didn't do anything wrong. I can't go a day without doing something wrong. If I'm trying to get the indulgence in November, okay, I have to go to confessions and then I have to run as fast as I can down to the graveyard to get the rest, okay? <laughs> with my head down covered with a shopping bag, right? And you come in to me and you say you've been away six months and you haven't been done anything wrong. I'm, I'm an old man, I, should, I shouldn't be upset like this, okay? Don't do that to me. My blood pressure goes through the roof. Okay, so there you are, you're in confessions. You've made the big step and you're there. Tell the worst thing first. Why? Look, if you don't tell it first, the chances are you won't tell it. That's, that's the only reason why. You tell it where you want it. But there's a very good chance, humanly speaking, basic bog standard psychology, if you don't get it off your chest straight away, You'll put it off, put it off, put it off, and you'll go out without having told you. You'll have made a bad confession and you'll have possibly added to your, your sinful state. You'll be in a worse state. So why do that to yourself? Oh, I don't, what would the priest think? It's not the priest's business to be passing judgment on you. He'll go to hell for that. So if the priest judges you, you can just think, you're going to go to hell. <laughs> you can tell him that. <laughs> no, don't tell him that. Then the next thing you're thinking of is, oh, you know, I, I, I'll never remember everything. For goodness sake, do what the top actors do. Write it down. Sit down the night before and make a list and either learn it off or keep it with you. I've seen devout Catholics before confession take out a piece of paper from their pocket and go down through it beforehand. That's how a, that's how you do it professionally. That's how you do it as a job of work, like a tradesman. That's how you do it if you're serious. Work it out. The priest is your servant. You should treat the priest. You should have the confidence with the priest of an English aristocrat addressing his butler. It's not as if you, you don't have respect for the priesthood or respect for him as a man. But he doesn't get to judge you. He's there in persona Christi, in the person of Christ. If it weren't for Christ, he wouldn't have any function there at all. It's Christ that has brought the two of you together. And listen to me. Do you know what has happened when you go into the confessional? This is an event. It is a happening, as they used to say in the 60s. This is seismic, because you're unique. And there you are, and there he is. And there is only you and him and God. And he acts as the, he acts as the catalyst for you to speak. So God gives you a human to talk to. Out of his great charity and mercy, he gives you a human to talk to. The priest can never talk about what you tell him. He is bound by the seal always. This is free. There are people paying a fortune for less. Grace is being poured out in buckets in the confessional. For goodness sake, for God's sake, for your sake, use the confessional. Stop carrying that around. Stop burdening yourself like that. Stop doing that to yourself. God has given you a means to deal with this. Confess your sins, do your penance, move on. You have things to do. You can be sure you have things to do. You can be sure there is something that God wants you to do. And you can be sure that the devil is delighted that instead of doing what God wants you to do, you're obsessed with what you've done. That is beautiful work. That is beautiful work on the part of the devil. Very nice work. Break away. Move on. Go to confession. God bless you. God keep you. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.